are few spiritual leaders with a legacy as storied as Pastor Albert. Femi Oduwole, a Harvard-educated teacher and innovator, Pastor Albert works at the cutting edge of performing consulting, leading a global team at Get Inspired INC. But ministry is his primary calling and the family his mission. His expertise is sought after and he has been invited to speak and mentor in Asia, Europe, Africa and America. Pastor Oduwole draws from the most poignant example of marriage, the union between Christ and the church, and teaches how to build christ -centered marriages. He has devoted 25 years to this ministry and has worked with couples to salvage and strengthen thousands of marriages through his virtual and physical love clinics. When he isn't helping couples repair and rediscover love, he shepherds the triumphant nation, a fast-growing network of churches under the umbrella of World Ablaze International Mission, a multi-faceted mission and ministry he founded with his wife and partner, TJ. Pastor Oduwole is committed to the advancement of the gospel and the restoration of the family. He is a stellar leader and an enduring example of Christian excellence. Harvesters International Christian Center with a standing ovation. Please give a warm. Is somebody excited here? Is somebody really excited here? Are you sure? Ezekiel 21, 27, God said, overturn, overturn, overturn. Look at your neighbor and say, overturn, overturn, overturn. My God is not a stammerer. If God is repeating it, it's because it is sure. God is turning it in your favor. He's moving it around. Overturn, overturn, overturn. Things will no longer be the same until it comes to you. Who's turn the things and he will give it to you. Oh! Look at three people, tell them it's my turn, it's my turn. Hey, it was your turn yesterday. It's my turn now. It may be your turn tomorrow. It's my turn now. God is turning it around. Get ready. You're about to dance with you. We are about to congratulate you. We are about to rejoice with you. Your waiting is not a waste. God is getting it ready for you. Give God a show. Listen, if I visit Pastor Bolaji, and she says to me, Reverend, don't worry. Your, your, your food will soon be ready. Give me three minutes. I know it's Indomie. But he says, Reverend, I hope you are not in a hurry. Oh, it might take a while. I will start to lose my belt. Ah, if God seems to be taking time, he's getting it ready for you. He's got all the press down, shaking together, running. Somebody said, but Reverend, they are all married. They can all be married, but they can't marry your husband. Ah, Hey, your own is coming. Find point no people. So, oh, they might have children, but they can't give back to your own. Let them buy cash. So, they can't buy your own. Some, 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 somebody say, but, 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 but every, if all of them are married and just married, that means I'm late. If they've all got in the car before I get my home, that means I'm late. You are not late. Your home is the latest. Hey, Kalapa Makayega. Somebody's about to be the latest bride, the latest groom, the latest car owner. Are you ready? Give God the best shout you can. You can be sure God bless you. Hallelujah. Can you celebrate Pastor Bolagi and Pastor Mo for me? We've come a very long way. Before you are, we were. Amen. Praise God. Such a joy to have been here. First service, second service, third service. If you miss any of the sessions, I think you can get it on YouTube. Somebody that does not come to this church, put something on LinkedIn. She said she was today that she was getting ready for her own church and she decided to join the second service. 
and she got so blessed and she's sharing what she got. Wow. From another church. If people using straw through the window are getting blessed, what of you that the meal is in front of you? Praise God. I want to talk basically to mingle to singles. I'm talking from my book, Marimatics, the Almighty Formula for Marrying Right. Yeah, I wrote the story of a man that woke up in the morning looking at his wedding certificate for five hours. The wife was tired at the end of the fifth hour. What is wrong with you? What are you looking for in this wedding certificate you have not found? Five hours. The guy said, leave me. I'm just looking. I'm just looking. I'm just looking for the expiry date. I'm just looking for the... But there is an expiry date in the wedding certificate. It is till death do us part. And that's a long... Oh, with marriage is that every other thing you do in life, you get better with time. I can build a better building now, I've built some. I can travel better now, I've traveled quite some. I can write a better book now, I've written some. But when it comes to marriage, your first is meant to be your last. That is why you have to stay by the word and use other people's experience for you to get it right. Marriage is not something you get into and you get out of. No. Remember a man that was watching the video of those days, VHS of his wedding, but was watching it in the rewind. <laughs> As well as, why are you watching it in the rewind? He said, I love it like that. I love to see myself remove the ring from my finger. I love to see myself walk outside the church. I love to see myself every time I can't zoom up. You might watch in the rewind, but you can't rewind time. Get it right. It's better to get it right than to try to make it right. Are you listening to me? That's very, very important. The Bible is very clear about God's intention for marriage. He says it's not good for man to be all one. I'll make an hell permit for him. There are five dangerous don'ts before you do. Five dangerous ones you must not do. Number one, don't marry an unbeliever. Can I say that again? Don't marry an unbeliever. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 14 to verse 18, message translation. He said, don't become partners with those who reject God. How can you make partnership out of right and wrong? That's not partnership, that's war. Is light best friends with dark? Does Christ go strolling down with the devil? Do trust and mistrust old hands? Who will think of setting up pagan idols in God's holy temple? I put something now. Uh, if you are not following me on Instagram, you might, and on Facebook, I do a relationship with every Sunday. Um, I think last Sunday, the last one or the one before then, I was talking about, I was talking to a guy, I said, you can't afford to marry a non-believer. He said, why, 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 why not? Uh, I'm in love with her. I said, well, it's true. The bird can fall in love with the fish. And the fish can fall in love with the bird. But if they marry, where will they live? Is it the fish that we go to the sky to live with the bird? Or the bird that we come into the water to live with the fish? If a believer and a non-believer get married together, where do they live in the spirit or in the flesh? And you know that it's nobody you marry that does not come from a family. If you marry a believer, God is your father-in-law. You marry a non-believer, the devil is your father-in-law. And every father-in-law must visit. And when they visit, they come with gifts. <laughs> and the devil's gifts have won. Then you are coming. Pastor Paul, I get me catch the devil out of my house. Take it easy now. We can't tell father-in-law not to come. He has a legitimate right in that child's house. Number one, never, never, never. Somebody say never. Never, never. Never, never. never marry a non-believer. Number two, never marry based on vision or dream alone. Never. <laughs> never. A lot of people, and I, I'm surprised that some people in church, New Testament, word of faith, Christocentric people, See, allow their mom and their dad to push them to one prophet for profit to help them pick who they should marry. Is it not surprising that your mom tells you to go and bring three names? Your mom. So she expects you to be playing three games. Your mom. When our church was smaller, a young lady came to me and said, the mom told her to go and bring three names. He said, I have only one person. Say, no, you are not ready yet. When you have three names, come back. She'll be waiting for two years. Say, you know what we're going to do? 
I'm a Yoruba man in Yoruba. Almost every Yoruba guy has about seven to eight names. I said, this guy you want to marry, how many names does he have? He said seven. I said, good. Let's pair the names together. Let's give them three names, but all the names are his. And gave it to the mom. The mom was very happy. The mom took it to the prophet. The clueless prophet said the first one, the beginning will be sweet. But the hands won't be fine. The second one, they will have a good time for a while, though. Then the guy will break his leg. The third one is the real one. <laughs> Mumushious entity. Don't marry because of prophets. That is stupidity on rampage. I'm saying you could find a wife, find a good thing. Not he that the prophet find it for. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, 8, if there are dreams of vision, he said they will see it. It's only love that never fails. I love to say the source of a thing must be the sustenance of it, of it. So if you marry by love, it's love that will sustain it. If you marry by prophecy, <laughs> when problem come, just start to prophesy. Only mm, thou share to my spirit by the Lord. Mm, thou shalt be my wife. Thou shalt not be annoyed. You don't marry by prophecy alone. Number three, don't marry under pressure. Don't marry under pressure. Them that put you under pressure to marry won't be there when you're going through stress. Don't marry under pressure. Proverbs 19, 14 says, House and riches are in the inheritance of parents. But a prudent wife, only God can give. Proverbs 19, 14. Parents can give you houses. They can give you a car. They can give you education. They can give you a spouse. No, that comes straight from God. Matthew translation says, the congenial spouse comes straight from God. So don't let anybody pressure you into getting married. All your friends are getting engaged. And so, my wife was the last of her friends to get into a relationship or the first to get married. The thing about life is everybody has his time. Don't let anybody pressure you. Time means matter. Ecclesiastes 3.11, God makes all things beautiful in his time. Don't do it if your partner is immature. Don't marry an immature partner. Remember Matthew 19, 11, not everyone is mature enough to live a married life. It requires certain aptitude and grace. Don't marry an immature fellow. And Beas does not make a man mature. If Beas makes a man mature, every goat will be a man. Hello? Because goats have full requirement. It takes maturity to make marriage work. A lot of maturity. This is how I know people that are not matured yet. Me, I can't take that from any man. They are not matured. Years ago, we were watching a movie, and the ladies that were there were saying, the guy was misbehaving, and I don't recommend that. But the ladies in the room were saying, I can never take that from any man. I'll just let him go. Just go, just go, just go. I looked at one of them. I said, if I give you a brand new car, and somebody's trying to take it from you, what will you do? Ah! He said, I will remove her feet. I'll drag her down. I said, so you are willing to fight over a car, but you can't fight over your marriage. Think for thought. Number five, don't do it if there is no love. Love makes marriage work. Very quickly, I want to teach you how to know if you love somebody or somebody loves you. Is that okay? All right. How to know if you love somebody or somebody really loves you. I said in the, in the second, third service, I think, I said, you had the story of the guy that said, um, <laughs> went to pastor and said, pastor, I love her. Pastor, how do you know love, you love her? I said, I really, really love her. Pastor, how do you know you really love her? He said, no, I love her because when I'm with her, I can't breathe. Oh. Pastor said, that's asthma. That's not love. Go and see a doctor. <laughs> Your generation is mistaking asthma for love. <laughs> so this chapter is on 10 love litmus tests. Number one, if it's true love, the person will be mindful of you. Their mind will be full of you if it's true love. If somebody loves you, they will be mindful of you. That is why, hey, he's so busy. That is why he's not called me. That can be love. Love, I mean, well, uh, just that he forgot my birthday. That can be love. Hello? If it's true love, the person will be mindful. Their mind will be full of you. 
Have you seen the guy that does not remember your birthday, does not remember your phone number? He knows the salary of every player in Arsenal <laughs> and what they drive and where they used to play. No, if he loves you, his mind will be full of you. Number two, if it's true love, giving will be easy. John 3 says, think of him that for God so loved that he so gave. If, if you love somebody, giving is instantaneous. I'm not saying because some people are not looking for a fiancé, they are looking for a financier. And ladies are funny in this generation. I can't marry a broke guy. Imagine me in Lucky Phase 1 marrying a guy without a car. Excuse me, sister, where did you park your own? Because if you can't marry a broke guy, that means you can't marry yourself. The guy took out a lady on a date in London and asked the lady and said, what kind of a person can you date? And the lady said, I can't date somebody that is broke. I don't can't hate, date somebody that is not making this kind of a money. I can't hate. And after she finished, the guy said, interestingly, you just described yourself. So why am I dating you? He stood up, he said, and I have the bill, please. Have a good life. I always love to tell people that you attract what you become. I want to marry a spiritual man. Are you spiritual? Some of you, the kind of spouse you are believing God for, if God give you that spouse, God is unfair to that spouse. Oh, did you hear me? I want to marry a king. Are you a queen? The Bible says, as face, I started to face in water, so the heart of man to man. So how do you, what, how do you do it? Number one, sit down and write all the qualities you want in a spouse. Number two, become that, those qualities. When the student is ready, the teacher will show up. When you become what you want, you will attract what you want. You are attracting people. The lady came to me years ago. She said she needed deliverance. That the first person that proposed to her is a organizer. I know that that is bad. The second one is an iron bender. The third one is a mechanic and she's a graduate. I said, forget graduate. The way you are looking, the fourth one will be a bricklayer. <laughs> if it's true love giving will be easy I said earlier I said <laughs> love that does not give you cats today won't give you cats tomorrow so giving does not start from big things giving starts from small things it's the intentionality that matters if somebody loves you they'll give to you I was saying in the third service about the young guy that came to me to go help him talk to the man of the girl he intended to marry, and the man said he must never see them together again. And I went as the pastor to talk to the man. Excuse me, sir, this guy said, the man said, yes, he's stingy, I want it. And when the man said that, revelation dawned on me that it's true. The man said they've been dating for two years, ordinary bread, he never brought to this house. Ordinary scarf, he never brought for my daughter. I said, your daughter, me that lay hands on him, lay legs on him till he graduated. Give him money for handouts. Since he started working, she, she, I've not seen. <laughs> so the guy in church, the next Sunday, Reverend, my master, hey, you are a whom? <laughs> True love gives. And it's very important. Number three, if it's true love, forgiving will be easy. If it's true love, forgiving, that will be offenses. But if it's true love, forgiving will be easy. I said in the first service about the man and his wife that were always fighting. And when they fight, they will come and call pastor to come and settle. One year, pastor said, I'm tired of coming to settle quarrel. This year, I'm going to come only once. I'm going to come last day of the year. You bring your families together. I'm going to create a box for you this year. Ease and hard. Wife, if your husband offends you, go and drop it in ease. Man, if your wife offends you, go and drop it in hard. December 31, they gather together. Then the man, the pastor turned to the man, go and bring your box. Ah, the woman said, no, lady's first. Pastor said, that's true. So lady, go and bring your box. He said, it's too heavy, I can't carry it alone. Yeah! Everybody look at the man, this man must be very wicked. So he took two men to carry it. When they opened it, he got one. He said, happy new year. He said, mm. he 
didn't say it again. Generally, he said, do you want to hear? I didn't answer. He didn't ask me again. You know, by evening, they were tired. He says, husband, sorry, we can't take your wife's home today. We're... The man said, no, 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 it's not a problem. It won't take time. He said, do you need them to help you carry it? He said, no. Then he went to carry it. They opened it. It was empty. He said, you mean all through the year, your wife never offended you? He said, well, even if she does, I love her so much, I didn't keep a record of it. Then you have said, are you trying to say I'm the problem in this valley? I'm the problem. <laughs> Forgiveness becomes easy when there is love. Have you seen a baby biting the mother and the mother keeps on breastfeeding her? You try to bite her. You find yourself in Kirikiri. <laughs> Real love, forgive. Number four. If it's true love, commitment will be easy. True love is not only about conviction, it's also about commitment. Did you hear what I just said? This guy, you have been in relationship with him for seven years in, in courtship. Cut that courtship. Cut it. I'm putting that in on social media today. Cut that courtship. You know what the Bible said? The Bible said, if it is slavery, after seven years, let her go. Ah, I beg you, go. Let her go. Seven years. And some of you, for seven years, you have been carrying a ring around. Lord of the rings. <laughs> One day I said in church, I said, let us pray for them in prison. Including them that are in relationship prison. Seven years, you have been caught in. Where I come from, they said, if you use seven years to lay foundation of madness, Man, where will you really go, Radhika? Ah, praise God. As I'm talking, be looking at that guy that keeps you in perpetual. <laughs> if it's real love, commitment will be easy. Real love, commit. And some people are wicked, they keep you hanging. Somebody asked me, said, how do you propose to who you want to, to marry? I said that when I was here a few years ago. I said, number one, it's like driving. I've driven cars in North America, in Europe, in Asia, in Africa. It's the same thing. When you are driving, you want to turn right. You indicate you want to turn. Hello? You start to indicate. And lady, if you want him to park, let him park. But if you don't want him to park, start to sing special number. No parking, brother. No. And brother, if they tell you no parking, don't do shakara. We want to branch before. My hand mistakenly touched the trafficator. I'm trying to move right. He just touched it. But there are some of you men. You are trafficating two places at the same time. God will punish you double. <laughs> That is me, you people. The way they said the amen. When Pastor Bolaji was sitting in prayer, the amen was not this sound, though. Ah, brother, you don't show us bad. <laughs> and there are some of you, you trafficate left, you branch right. God will punish you. Ah. Ah. Brothers, they are putting Jesus' name to this, you know. Brothers. But there are some of you ladies. The guy trafficate. You allow him to trafficate. He wants to park. You say no parking. He took you to tantalize her. You tantalize. <laughs> Mr. Big, you big. Oriental, you orient. He now want to park. You say no parking. God will punish you too. Okay. But if it's true love, commitment will be easy. Number five. If it's true love, communication will be easy. Communication. I've been married for about 26 years, and I must tell you sincerely, what, what do couples really do? Because some of you, all you are thinking now is that all couples do is have sex. <laughs> Okay. Sometimes one year after marriage, 
Your spouse is pinching you. You pretend as if you are dead. Not as if you are asleep. Oh. Like this one is not waking up. You will need the anointing to raise the dead. Some guys are like, eh, can that ever happen? No, you soon know. So what do couples do? More than any other thing we talk. It's a lot of communication. You communicate. The word communication is from the word communicate. Larry, which means to have something in common. If you're in a relationship now and you are not talking, it's a red flag. It's a big red flag. Because in marriage, you keep on talking. You keep on. If the communication is not flowing now, it's a big red flag. Because in marriage, we communicate. Number six. Real love comes with the willingness to parade. Yeah, 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 yeah. Real love comes with the willingness to parade. If you really love somebody, you want to parade them. You want people to see them. You want people to know. So all these people that come to you and say, well, we are in relationship, but don't let anybody know. That is of the devil. The inheritance of the saint is in the light. He never put you on the status. The only time he put you, he said, somebody dear to me. And the lady put it, God bless the person behind my, star, my, my smile. There are several of you. If you are the one, your name should be there. <laughs> if it's true love, there should be willingness to parade. I know your gimmicks, so. Me too, I'm Gen Z. <laughs> uh -uh. I thought you say yes now. Don't I look Gen Z? Can't you say I don't have any gray hair on my head? Can you say any gray hair? My boy know people chubby cheek pink lips like me. The one here I fell on, I fell on the flower. Is anybody hearing me? If it's true love, there is willingness to parade. Number what now? Peace is a major proof of true love. If it's true love, there will be peace. If it's true love, there will be peace. It's not God's intention for you to, to enter into a relationship and lose relevance. There are three kinds of men. There are hunters. There are predators. And there are farmers. Predators look for a prey that is already weak to pounce on. And there are people like that even in church. They come to church, they pick a lady from the choir, and they tell her never to sing again. Wicked people. And they say they're in church. They are scavengers. They already have low self-esteem. They lower it. Then there are hunters. Hunters point and kill. Then they hang the head in their sitting room. For sure. Because there are farmers. Wow. If you enter into the end of a farmer, you will know. They know to turn a seed to a forest. As a pastor, I've seen girls get into the hand of a farmer. And in less than six months, other brothers in church were asking, that sister, has she always been in this church? She has always been in this church. She just does not look like she's looking now. A farmer handled her. The only problem sometimes with farmers is that their hands are coarse. And their mouth is not sweet like that of hunter. Hunter can drop the voice. How you doing? saw the way you were worshiping and my spirit left. <laughs> I said that to some of my daughters and one of them said, Reverend, we all like farmers. Where post tell them to go and learn some skills from one task? Yeah. Yes? Okay, farmers, are you hearing? They need to learn some skill. Praise God. There is peace. Number a, if it's true love, people around him will show you respect. Listen to me, ladies. I want to talk to you ladies particularly. It does not matter what he says to you, how his friends and family treat you. is the real way he sees you. I, I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Because what he's saying to you and what he's saying to them are the two different things. Watch out the attitude of his friends. If they call you our wife and giggle, 
Hey! Hey! They call you our wife. <laughs> you don't chop breakfast. It's, <laughs> it's very sad. Ladies, you need to be careful. The only kind of men that don't break hearts in this world are people whose name is Femi. Pastor Bonaki, do you agree? Yes. That's my name. We families don't break. Eh? Never. Never. Every other name, Tudeo, Yinkao, Ah. Eh? Hey, Kingsley, run. <laughs> but Femi, mm, very committed people. I'm the one with the microphone, amen? Number nine, true love comes with respect. If somebody loves you, they will respect your body. They will respect your vision. They will respect your time. They will respect your opinion. True love comes with true respect. Somebody that does not even respect boundaries and you are not married yet, that's not true love. There is a respect that comes with love. And that is why you just got in with somebody and they're trying to prioritize you for sex. That can be God. Hello? That can be God. Years ago, a young lady came to me. She said, she was in my church. We were just starting there. She said, I just feel jammed the third time. I'm not officially mad at the She said, look, as I'm living here now, I'll go get drunk, then I'll have sex, then I'll smoke. I was trying to cancel that before. I said, oh, that's good. Have a good time. Then she looked at me and said, I mean it. I said, yeah, no. enjoy yourself. See you on Sunday. Then she stood up. She got to the door. She turned back. He said, I'm going. You know? I said, yes, yeah, you smoke. I said, did you hear what I said? I said, yes. He said, you smoke. You drink. You have a lot of sex. So oh, good now. He said, ah, why are you talking like that? I said, no, no, wait. So if you smoke and drink and have sex, God will die. He said, no, he won't die. He said, boy, we have hypertension. He said, they can't have hypertension. Okay, boy, we have cardiac arrest. He said, no. So what will he do to God? He said, nothing. So when God says don't do, you do, you don't do, does not affect him. He said don't do for your own salvation. I was preaching in South Africa. One lady asked me a question in Johannesburg several years ago. Another question. She said, normally I like question and answer. But that one didn't have an answer at all. The question was very simple. He said, if God does not want us to sleep together, why did he not turn the arch off the arch? Until we get married. It made sense to me. I go to the hotel. I say, excuse me, my Lord, if I may, may I, my Lord, suggest to you that you should please turn it off. Or, because for me as a pastor, it will give me peace. One day I call my church member. I say, you people, when do you want me to rest? Before you marry, I'm shouting, don't sleep together. In the name of Jesus, don't sleep together. I bind the devil, don't sleep together. I rebuke the flesh, don't sleep together. In the name of Jesus, don't sleep together. You are married, I'm shouting, sleep together. In the name of Jesus, sleep together. Three times a week, sleep together. I bind the devil, sleep together. When do you want me to rest? So I say, God, help us. Turn it off. That when we say, we now pronounce you... Husband, Grrr, yes. <laughs> Does that not make sense to you? But God said to me, for this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave to a wife, not a boy cleave to a girl. He said to me, the proof of maturity is the ability to delay gratification. If a two-year-old kid is here and says, I want biscuit, if you don't get that kid biscuit, this meeting is over. But if you are telling me I want be kick, I want be kick. I say, Pastor Bola, you go and cast the devil out of him. Because you can't wait. A guy that is saying, I have to sleep with you now. I have to sleep with you now. That shows you that he's an immature guy. He's not mature. He can't wait. And you see, even after marriage, there are times you need to wait. Your wife is heavily pregnant. You need to wait. He had to go and do masters in Ukraine. You need to wait. 
I'm talking to somebody this hour. You need to wait. Maturity wait. Am I talking to somebody? It's very important. So the plan and purpose of God is for you to marry mature children. Somebody said to me, he said, well, but if we never uh, uh, try it, how do we know we got it right? Actually, other studies have proven that people that marry as virgins have a better sexual life. You don't believe me. Believe me. I got married very late. I got married at 26. My wife was 25. Why are you looking like that? But the good thing is that we got married as virgins. When I went to the honeymoon, I said to her, I said, this place we are even going, do we even know what to do? But you know the exciting thing about being married as virgins is that anyhow you get it, you enjoy it. You have nothing to compare it to. But you. <laughs> like, ah! Man, the last one was better. Ah! I remember China Yeoma. God has a plan. So when God says stick with one person, he knows what he's talking about. Body count is nonsense count. Don't do it. Number 10. True love comes with true security. Insecurity is a proof of the fact that the love is not genuine. Security is a proof of love. First John chapter 5, verse 14, message translation. He said, said there is no room in love for fear. Well-formed love banishes fear. Since fear is crippling, a fearful life, fear of death, fear of judgment, is one that is not yet fully formed in love. If you really love somebody, you'll be secured in their love. Am I talking to somebody in this house? Did anybody get anything? Are you sure? As a single person, please let me say this to you. This is the time for you to develop yourself. Develop. Marriage gives you peace. Very big. You don't, children don't understand time. But one day I had to talk out to my friend. I said, Are your children like my own? Because I think at that time that the devil was using my children. <laughs> because you wake them up. Sunday to Friday, it's battle. Saturday, you want to rest. They wake up 5 a.m. <laughs> oh, do you have children? Go and find out. And I thought it was demonic. One day I told my wife, I said, today, this Saturday, no matter what they do, you will pretend as if they are dead. They won't answer them. So they came. Then they were just the two girls. They pushed us. We didn't answer. The, one of them lifted my eyes, I put it back. <laughs> lifted it like this, I put it back. They pushed us, we didn't answer. Then they started playing one another. I was happy it was working. The one said, when we grow up, we will now marry. I was like, don't just marry and get out of here. I was thinking it. <laughs> then he said, we will now, I will now come to your house. I will say, and see me. Then I said, no, I prefer sister me. <laughs> I was giggling. Then we now tell our children, come, come, come. Come and greet. Go and come and play with grandpa. We want to go out. That's when I open my eyes. You know, <laughs> you can't be planning my retirement without my consent. I'm waiting for you to get out. You are talking children. Ah! <laughs> now that you're single, develop yourself. Read all the books. Learn all you Make sure your waiting time is not wasting time. Invest heavily while you are waiting. Because at the end of the day, you will need it. Sometimes, your single time is the best time of your life. Because you are not accountable to nobody. Paul said, once you are married, to fast, you even need permission. To fast. To do God's thing. You need to negotiate with your spouse. Wow. Enjoy your singleness. It's a face. But you can make it a lovely face. Or you can make it a face of impatience. And that changes everything. Have you been blessed? Yeah. All right. One of my favorite chapters in this book, Mary Marix, is when I talked about 
21 reasons why I married my wife and not you. Find out why I married her. If you're a guy, we help you to know who to marry. If you're a lady, we help you to know what reasonable, sensible, visionful guys are looking for. Praise God. This is one of my favorite books. Also, I love my spouse, but if you don't buy it for the content, buy it for the container. Amen? You see that fine girl leaning on the fine boy, and the fine boy is spiritual. He's just looking onto Jesus. Here, yeah, I talked about how to handle differences. One of the most attractive things in marriage is that differences bring us together, but if you are not careful, differences will scatter us. How do we handle differences in marriage? Seven things champions do before breakfast. Great book. I tell you, life can never be the same again. I spoke somewhere on yesterday, and somebody asked me a question. How did you become what you become? I said, you become what you become by what you do daily. And here I talk about the daily dozens of my life, 12 of them, that I do every day to become what I've become. Prostitutes approach to business. Ten things you need to do in your marriage, in your ministry, in your business to have tremendous results. Unlocking power for exploit will change your life of excellence and your prayer life. Surviving betrayal will help you to overcome breakfast. Amen? You understand that. All the outbreaks. I call it surviving, not, not to avoid it, because you can't avoid sometimes, but you can survive. One of the chapters here I found interesting is why do people betray? Another one is why does betrayer hurt? Somebody asked me that question. I said betrayer hurt not because of the act that is done, but the person that did it. It was brutus. It's not the fact that people were trying to kill him. It was the fact of who was holding the dagger. I still do how to make love last forever. Because for some people, their love now has expiry date. But love is not meant to have expiry date. My wife and I wrote this book. I wrote five chapters. She wrote five chapters. Five, five, no cheating. This is the sixth edition. So which means we have produced six different times, thousands of copies all over the world. I believe this is my best book yet. Somebody asked me, Reverend, which of your book is the best one? The next one. You built some houses. Which one of them is the best? The next one. You preach some messages. Which message is the best? The next one. Make sure in life that your next one is the best. The vision God gave unto Rachel. He said the older must have the younger. Make sure the younger of all you do is better than the one you have done before. But I believe this is my best book ever because it is how to be led. People ask me everywhere, how do I know who to marry? And I told them wrong question. The real question is not who do I, how do I know who to marry, but how do I know to be led by the Spirit of God? Because it's only in marriage people want to be led out of every other aspect of life. And that is very important. Praise God. Stand on your feet, let's pray. Have you been blessed? Let's pray. This month, Avestas Lekki is devoting the whole month to teaching you and making your relationship to work. But there is somebody close to you that also needs help. Make sure you don't come to church alone. Bring somebody to church. Tell them, oh, are you blessed today? Share with somebody what you learned and tell them to follow you to Avestas because it will make a difference in their life. Now, listen to me. I don't only teach relationship like a coach. I'm anointed where relationship is concerned. I have three loads of people that are delay in marriage. And by one pronouncement, things change. I want to pray for you. Some of you, you are like, Rev, I, I mean, I, 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 I'm so, so, and so. Nobody. I remember one year I flew into Abuja. And one lady was smiling at me. And you know when you're a pastor, you learn what I call pastoral smile. You learn familiarly to everybody you don't know. Because if you don't do it, they will say you are proud. So they say, hello. So I say, oh, hello, how are you doing? I say, everything has been a while. Then she laughs. I know you don't know me. I say, I'm sorry. And that's how we greet everybody. She said, when I was in, so you used to come preach in our fellowship, I was the vice president. Oh, I said, good to see you again. I see family. Then she Moved close to me and said, no family. I said, what do you mean by that? She said, well, nobody had proposed to me in about nine years. Good girl had a fantastic job. I said, ah, hope they are not prioritizing you at home. He said, they pressure you for a while, then they start to pray for you. <laughs> I said, can I pray for you? 
He said, that's why I came to greet you. I've heard of your testimony. And right there at the airport, I prayed for her. It was a year after she sent me a message that that same month, first time in nine years, somebody proposed to her. Happily married the one day. Way after the wedding to Sweden, when she came to look for me, I decreed to everybody single and ready to marry, whatever had kept you delayed, I break it now by the anointing. I decree, no matter the delay, it's time for your harvest. Amen. Whatever had stopped your parents won't stop you. Amen. What destroyed their marriage will not destroy your marriage. Amen. Your case is different from today in the name of Jesus. One minute to marry wrong, God will turn it around for you. Amen. You will marry the right person at the right time. The wedding will be great, but the marriage will be greater. God will make all things work together for your good. Overturn, overturn, overturn. It is your turn now. God is bringing the right person your way. You will testify of his goodness. This month of relationship, your relationship will sue up. You will meet people that will turn your destiny around. In the name of Jesus, your testimonies will be sound. So will it be in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.